It all started when our private school rented the top of a church building in a pretty sketchy city in Washington State. It was very exciting for us because we've basically been homeschooling the whole time, and this new area would be perfect to kickstart progress for our school. We didn't notice anything in the start, and it seemed like a steal renting out the top floor because of how much room there was. We couldn't rent the first floor because the church was using it, but it had the only bathrooms in the building, so we were allowed to go down to use it. We had this bathroom buddy system where there has to be at least two people going down to the bathrooms, no less. This system was to ensure the safety of students because the area had a lot of homeless people and our school manager didn't want to take any chances. My brother had to use the bathroom, so I agreed to go downstairs with him and wait outside the door. My brother was in there a while, and I decided to sit down at a table that was in the open meeting area. I was utterly alone in that open area. Then out of nowhere, I hear footsteps all around me. The patterns were spontaneous, and I was sure there were no people downstairs with me. I heard the floorboards creaking, which made it even more chilling. Thankfully, my brother came out of the bathroom, and I told him about what happened. He recalled hearing the same things whenever he would wait outside the bathroom for other people. We both agreed that something fishy was going on, but we just decided to brush it off because we needed to catch up on school. The first thing was bone chilling, but we had other things to do, so we forgot about it. My brother then told me about this time and we had to go downstairs to the bathroom with a friend, and what he told me shocked me. Before I tell you this, you need to know about the way to get to the downstairs bathrooms. In order to go to the bathrooms, you need to take the dark and creepy stairwell that takes you to the even darker and creepier hallway. This hallway leads you to the nursery, and from the nursery to the bathrooms. My brother told me that when he went through the nursery, he saw that one of the baby cradles was rocking by itself. This definitely spooked me, and I started getting suspicious of the building. Fast forward about a year, and we're moving out of the building. We've decided to move to the other church across from the bigger church, and this time we're renting the whole building. This new church had a much more welcoming vibe and you felt a lot safer. Something I forgot to mention about the past building is that the lights would keep going out and the power would constantly shut off. This new building would feel very warm. It had a more stable electrical output and you did get very strange feelings. I'll get back to that later. Anyway, since we were moving buildings, we'd obviously have to move stuff from the old one to the new one. This is where the creepy stuff started happening. Now that the building was empty in a sense of being devoid of people, you had a very strong sense of dread and eeriness. Every hallway you would pass, you'd feel like you're being watched in the darkness. The building was also much colder than before, and some rooms would be perfectly normal and warm, but others would have a cold and dark presence. My friends and I knew exactly what we were going to do. Explore. My friend group consisted of three other people, one being my brother, 
So all in all, we only had a force of four people. When we were exploring, we decided to go down to that creepy stairwell with our phone flashlights. This is where a lot of the stuff started. When we went down, it was only one other kid and I, my brother and the other friend, decided to stay back up. We were going down the hallway and I got an overwhelming feeling of being watched from the darkness. There was an exit door next to the bottom of the stairs and I keep looking at it. I felt as though we were staring at our souls. We tried to open the door to the nursery, but it was locked. It seemed to be locked from the other side, possibly from the church locking it, which was a very plausible explanation. My other friend and I decided that we should go back up because the overwhelming sense of dread was too much for us at the time, and we needed to start packing things up. There were a lot more things happening, but I'll have to tell the main things building up to this point. When we were loading stuff into the car, my other friend told us to come look at something. So we all marched up the stairs from outside. This was another entrance to the building. And I asked him what it was. He told us that he heard talking all the way from the creepy stairwell in the back of the building. And just as he heard that, a chain that was present in the room started swaying from side to side. This obviously freaked us all out and we decided to pick up the pace of packing things up. In this situation, our curiosity got the best of us and we took that opportunity by using the bathroom. We used another entrance to get to the bathroom without having to go through the locked nursery door. My friend brought a radio to see if he could pick up some signals. Now usually we'd use radios to listen to police channels to hear if there was a chase going on, but this time my friend was trying to see if he could pick up ghost readings which I thought was pretty impossible. Something happened to this radio, though. The battery went from three bars to zero. This shocked us because we all learned that ghosts or spirits can drain the battery usage on most items. Though, that wasn't the only strange thing that happened. That day, we had to carry some drawers down the creepy flight of stairs through the creepier hallway. We accepted the offer and started carrying the drawer to the locked nursery door from the side it was locked. My friend had the key, so he unlocked it. I vividly remember having to unlock the door and get the drawer upstairs, then lock the door. The next day, my friends would decide to go down the stairwell into the creepy hallway, but one of them chickened out. I mean, I don't blame him. We have encountered some crazy things, but he was very persistent in staying behind. We let him leave, and so we went down to the hallway that gave me the creeps. I got that feeling of being watched again, and... I was getting nervous, but then something my friend said caught my attention. The door to the nursery is unlocked. I couldn't really believe what I was hearing. I remember having to lock the door when going through. That meant someone or something had to have unlocked it from the other side. We were leaving the hallway quickly, and during that, I heard some sort of low-pitched groaning. That could have been a door opening or closing. 
both of the ideas were just as disturbing because we were alone in the building. A few hours of packing passed and we were, we were finishing up the job. We we're sitting around planning to pick up a bookshelf when we heard footsteps coming from the creepy stairs. Thankfully, the door was closed, but we decided it was best to just move the bookshelf quickly and get out of there. When we were leaving, we also heard faint, inaudible talking coming from that door. That was the last time we ever went to that church building. But I'm just glad we never opened that door again.